In this demo, we'll talk about why firewalls and other traditional packet-based network monitoring tools are severely limited in their ability to understand cloud-native environments like Kubernetes, as well as how Cilium and Hubble use the power of eBPF to give security teams deep application identity and API layer visibility to better identify threats and speed incident investigations and response. Traditional packet-based network visibility has three primary flaws in modern cloud-native environments. Firstly, they use IP addresses as the primary notion of identity, but IP addresses are increasingly meaningless in highly ephemeral, containerized environments. What matters instead is the identity of the team who deployed the workload and the identity of the code running inside the workload. Secondly, they use ports as the primary notion of what type of data is being sent on the network. However, the majority of connections today go over a small number of ports like 80 or 443, and ports provide no understanding of the direction or type of data being communicated between two cloud-native services. Thirdly, they exist only at the perimeter and are unable to see lateral movement where an attacker assesses additional services or data stores. At Isovalent, we're addressing these three limitations of traditional networking by building a new networking layer inside the Linux kernel that natively understands application identity and operates not only on network packets, but also efficiently inspects the API layer communication between services. All of this is possible thanks to a new technology that we co-maintain with the Linux kernel called eBPF, which efficiently extracts this data while running within the OS itself, requiring zero changes to applications or their containers. eBPF is the engine that powers Cilium, our highly popular open source project for identity and API-aware networking and security. In this demo, we'll show how we can leverage the power of eBPF to export identity and API-aware data about all network connectivity from a Kubernetes environment to your existing security tools. In this case, a Splunk-based SIM platform for better threat detection and faster incident investigation. For this scenario, assume that an external firewall or other tool at your perimeter generated an alert about an internal IP reaching out to a suspicious external IP. That tool gives you two IP addresses and the source IP address is in the range associated with your Kubernetes environment. Unfortunately, traditional network visibility cannot tell you much to help your incident investigation. In particular, because the source workload was containerized with multiple workloads running on a single host, the source IP address that your firewall will see will be the IP address of a VM or bare metal host running a set of containers, not an individual container and so you will be unable to even identify which team and application service were associated with the suspect. Cilium and Hubble can export aggregated flow data to a SIM platform like Splunk that includes rich, identity-aware metadata. For example, here we are able to see the name of the team and the name of the specific application service that generated the suspicious request, because Cilium associates Kubernetes label identity with each flow. We also see the exact DNS name that the endpoint looked up to make this external connection. Because Cilium's API awareness allowed it to pass the DNS layer requests emitted by the pod and associated that identity with the outgoing connections. From this data, we can conclude that the jobs team's crawler service seems like it may have been compromised and connected to an external command and control node. But because Cilium runs without the operating system, we do not need to stop at simply understanding the label identity associated with the pod IP. With full OS level visibility, we can dig in further to see what process was actually executing that generated the suspicious connection. Here, we can see that the connection was made by the netcat process configured to run a bash shell, which is positive confirmation that this is in fact attack-like behavior. This netcat process was spawned by the Node.js application that runs within this service, indicating the likely vector of the attack. Because Cilium can not only see identity and API-aware data, but also enforce security policies based on these attributes, we can easily choose to quarantine just this compromised crawler service. For example, cutting off all external access from this service to the outside world without having any negative impact on the other containerized workloads even if those other workloads are running on the same Kubernetes infrastructure as the compromised node. Now that we've identified a compromise and quarantined the initially infected service, 
we want to investigate how this attacker may have moved laterally and what sensitive internal data may have been accessed and exfiltrated. For example, we can again use the process level visibility to see all processes that are executed within the then compromised service. We again see the legitimate Node.js app, which reaches out to api.twitter.com, but we also see all the processes run from the reverse shell, including the use of curl to further explore the environment and move laterally. In this case, we see that the attacker discovered an internal elastic search service that was reachable from the crawler service. This lateral movement within the Kubernetes clusters would have been invisible to a traditional perimeter firewall, but Cilium provides complete detail both of the identity of the source and destination containerized workloads, but also the exact commands the attacker used to move laterally. We also see that the attacker seems to have accessed AWS's S3 storage service via curl. S3 is an interesting example, as simply understanding that the attacker accessed S3 on port 443 tells us nothing about whether the attacker was reading or writing data, and if so, which buckets in AWS were accessed by the attacker. This again is where Cilium's API awareness provides critical additional context. Cilium can inspect connectivity not only at the packet layer, but also at the API layer, even if that data is encrypted using TLS. For example, we can easily monitor all access from a team's namespace to AWS S3 including the buckets that are being accessed and the AWS key IDs being used to access those buckets. In this case, we can see that the attacker did not read or write anything to the organization's buckets, but did use S3 as a mechanism to stealthily exfiltrate large amounts of data to one of the attacker's own buckets, using the attacker's own AWS credentials. To wrap up, in this demo, we saw how Cilium plus eBPF's unique vantage point inside the OS can efficiently extract deep identity and API layer data from an environment, all with zero changes to the application workloads. This data can easily be sent to your existing security tools, including a SIM-like Splunk, to radically speed up incident investigation. This rich data can also be used to proactively generate alerts. For example, when a suspicious process is executed, when new lateral movement is observed, or when a new S3 bucket is accessed, all enabling you to be smarter about detecting and responding to threats in the first place.